At least six members of the Texas House Democratic Caucus have tested positive for coronavirus. The state representatives are temporarily living in D.C. after fleeing their home state to block the passage of elections bills. All of the Texas lawmakers who traveled to D.C. in protest are said to be fully vaccinated. They are calling on Congress to pass federal voting rights protections. This comes as Vice President Kamala Harris told CBS News she is speaking with Republican senators about voting legislation. For more on all this, I want to bring in Retta Bowers and Trey Martinez-Fisher. Retta is a Democratic member of the Texas House of Representatives from the 113th District, and Trey is a Democratic member of the Texas House of Representatives from the 116th District. Welcome to both of you. Representative Martinez-Fisher, I want to ask you about the COVID cases among your caucus. You have tested positive for COVID despite being fully vaccinated. How are you doing and how are your colleagues doing who've also tested positive? Well, Tanya, thank you for asking that. You know what? I, I feel fine. I, uh, I tested positive on a Sunday morning. I had a normal routine. I woke up early, had my coffee, did a yoga session in the hotel room. I felt fantastic. I uh, had a staff meeting uh, that same morning, and we typically rapid test before we get together and had a positive result. Uh, I was a little bit in shock about that. Retested 15 minutes later, same result. Uh, I'm having very, very minor symptoms, low-grade fever. Uh, I have checked in uh, with some of my colleagues, uh, and I understand they all are going through the same thing, you know, some minor symptoms. Uh, everybody's still working. We're working by Zoom, and we're isolating and quarantining. Well, I'm glad to hear that you are feeling okay for the most part. Hang in there. Representative Bowers, what about you? Have you been tested for COVID? Um, and are these cases impacting the work you're trying to do in Washington? Um, thank you, Tanya. And I'm glad to hear that Representative Martinez Fisher is feeling well. I've been checking in every day with my colleagues and delivering uh nourishment for them, whether that's food or, or fluids. But I have been testing and I've tested negative every day. Um, you know, and, and our hearts and prayers just go out to our colleagues. I've tested today as well negative and we had a PCR test administered today uh, by George Washington Hospital. Uh, but I, I will say, Tanya, that I do not believe that this stops our work at all. Um, we are continuing with a wonderful National Voting Rights Roundtable this week. We're hearing from secretaries of state and activists like uh, Dolores Huerta and Dr. Bernice King. Uh, we have heard from Cliff Albright from Black Voters Matter um, and just so many inspirational uh, uh, messages and encouragement to keep fighting. Uh, this evening and afternoon, I will be having a conversation that I, I will lead with Congresswoman Hakeem Jeffries. Our and Representative Martinez-Fisher is... Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Representative Martinez-Fisher, is your plan still to stay in Washington until the end of the special session? Yeah, so, you know, luckily we, we had a conference week planned this week and we, we had, had already made virtual capabilities for some of our presenters. And so, you know, in light of, of these recent tests, uh, we have mostly gone virtual. There are still members who are testing negative and, and everybody tests every day, which is above and beyond the CDC recommended guidelines. Uh, we do rapid test every day. We'll continue to meet this week. I, I actually think we're getting more done because it's virtual. Uh, be, being able to just line up our, our congressional visits, you know, back to back with without having to shuffle between offices. Uh, and we will continue to do that this week as we come out of quarantine. We will obviously evaluate our plans. We are committed to being here uh, uh, to killing the, the first called suppression session in Texas, which ends on August 7th. Uh, the, the congressional recess for the U.S. Senate is on August 6th. Uh, I think many of us are bound and determined to do everything we can to push for a national solution. Uh, and, and we have the time to do it, and we are, we are already here. And, and it's not lost on me that because of the bravery from the hardworking men and women of the Texas Democrats uh, in the House, we have elevated this issue uh, to, to one of the top uh, domestic items that is being mentioned across this country in terms of accomplishing something for the domestic agenda. And, and we have a lot of work to do, and we are very proud to be here. 
Well, speaking of, of bravery, and this question is for both of you, Governor Greg Abbott has threatened to arrest you when you return. Do you actually expect to be taken into custody when you get back to Texas? Um, what, what are your feelings about uh, Governor Abbott's threats there? I will let well, I'll uh, say... Representative Martinez <laughs> Duchesne go first. Thank you, Representative Bowers. What I'll say is the governor has a pretty bad habit of of using charged language. Uh, he does not have the power to arrest. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's just the, the power that's embedded with the Speaker of the House is to return us to the chamber uh, by authority of the sergeant at arms. Governor's also sort of referred to us as property, said he was going to corral us and he was going to do these things. I, you know, I, I'd hope that he dial that back. There are a lot of men and women, uh, a lot of African-Americans and Latinos uh, in the Democratic caucus, and we're very sensitive when we hear that kind of charged language. But no, we're not. Uh, we're, we're not in fear uh, of his threats. Uh, we're here united in purpose, and we are, and our purpose is based in the moral consciousness of this country, and that's to have a democracy. And Representative Absolutely. Bowers, I also want to hear your thoughts on that. And further, what message do you want to send to Congress on voting rights as they approach this issue uh, before the August recess? Uh, wonderful. Well, you know, I, I want to say that my colleagues said it very well, but we are not at all uh, threatened by the governor's uh, threat to arrest us. Um, I would say that in any in any regards, it, it's offensive uh, that he would make it known uh, that he could possibly corral and cabin us. Um, and uh, I, I just want to say that you know, right before Congresswoman Joyce Beatty was arrested, we were, uh, some of us were at a rally with her. And sometimes you have to be unafraid of being arrested to stand up for the cause and to stand up for your convictions. So we are uh, ready, really, by any means necessary to protect the right to vote for millions of Texans. And we are charged with and elected to represent all of our constituents. And that's certainly what we believe that we are doing here. Um, and to answer your question about Congress, we need them to act now. Um, I, I think, you know, I said that clearly in the first days or the second day that we were here, we landed that night before, and I said that firmly, and we will do everything in our power to make sure that uh, we push for Congress to act now and, and, and put those things in place that will help us to kill uh, this terrible legislation that would add burdensome paperwork um, requirements um, that will obstruct voter assistance, um, things that will require the mail ballot um, assisters to provide additional personal information. Um, all of these things would, would really keep people from voting, and we are doing everything we can to make sure the vote is not suppressed. The one thing that really, really bothers me the most is the voter intimidation. We're really targeted on, on and concerned about poll watchers um, and inside the polling location, but I want to add that that in voter intimidation happens outside the polling location as well, and I experienced that aggressively in my district. And Representative Martinez Fisher, as you know, Texas is not alone in this already. In this year alone, we've seen a dozen states enact new laws restricting voting access. What do you make of this, and why do you think it's happening now? Well, it seems to be a very coordinated attempt to, you know, sort of rewrite election rules, uh, making it harder to vote. Uh, I will tell you, uh, you know, now that this has become a national talking point, I think that, you know, uh, whether it's ourselves or other progressive groups, uh, we feel the sense of urgency to have a federal response. I think when it comes to voting rights in America, we should have one standard, and that's the American standard. Uh, we are already seeing, you know, lots of hurdles, lots of barriers to voting, lots of restrictions. I guess it's it's sort of the old adage: if you if you cannot change minds through voter persuasion, well, then I guess you change the rules to control the election outcome. And that's not what this country, that's not what democracy is all about. And so as we take our message to Capitol Hill, uh, I believe we are rallying the nation. I believe we are making some noise. We are elevating this discussion. And we hope that the Senate is hearing us. And we hope the Senate is going to act by giving us a For the People Act uh, before the August 6th recess. 
Texas State Representatives Trey Martinez-Fisher and Retta Bowers, thanks to both of you for joining us. We really appreciate your time.